Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to share what's happening at Town Council and our role in your hometown. For the opportunity to hear what's happening with the Chamber, Altona's business voice. And thank you for your role in leading our community through a 2020 of challenges for some and opportunities for others. As with your business, we began the year intending to follow through in some established strategic plans. And then almost exactly a year ago, abruptly pivoted to plan B, C, and at times D. And where did we? And where will we focus our attention moving forward? Well, let's spend a bit of time looking at our town of Altona's 365-day rear view mirror. First off, congratulations to the Chamber of Commerce on the successful hiring of a new manager. And let's also recognize the businesses and developers who have made a tangible vote of confidence in our community in 2020. Rogers Plumbing, Fernovac, Furry Tail Endings, Rough Mutts, Matrix Financial Services, Altona Yoga, Sunland Steel, Sun Valley Co-op with a huge expansion, the expansion at Friesen's, and Border Bean International, which I'm told shipped a load of pinto beans for Tijuana, Mexico last week, direct from Altona. Exciting news. Residential building permits increased in 2020 by 53%, and commercial building permits increased by 85% over the 2019 numbers. These increases were driven in part by the emerging presence of Moravia and K-Block developments, and we look forward to more growth in 2021. I've shared in previous years how many of you have expressed your frustration about the state of the former fast food location at Altona's entrance. We now share your excitement with the K-Block renovation currently underway. Thank you, Frank. 2020 ended with the sale of the remaining lots in our current industrial park and the official announcement that we had reached agreement with Grand West Farms for the purchase of an additional 113 acres to the north of 14th Avenue. This expansion is an ambitious long-term undertaking. We thank those of you who helped review the preliminary design and will again reach out to you as we conduct stakeholder meetings in 2021. Our commitment to economic growth will continue this year with direct financial support of the Chamber of Commerce, SEED, RPGA, along with continued funding for the RNIP program. As has been stated before, Altona Rhineland is one of 11 communities that was chosen from many applications to participate in the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program. We are year one into the program, and despite COVID challenges, our local businesses are starting to benefit from access to a larger labor pool. I've signed up to be a community mentor for a just arrived family. They are enthusiastic and goal oriented to creating a better life for themselves and most importantly, their children. I encourage you to consider that mentor role as well. I was part of a virtual community conversation last week with representatives from Altona Community Foundation, W.C. Miller Collegiate, Youth for Christ, and RBC as part of the RBC Future Launch Community Challenge. Our council was represented by Willow Kaler and Zainab Ali, who are serving as our youth reps this year. They shared the results of a high school student survey showing that 39% of students indicated poor internet connection had negatively impacted their school year. This reaffirmed the importance of the investment of $600,000 to bring fiber internet to each household and business in Altona. We hope your Valley Fiber experience has been positive. In 2020, we made it part of our strategic plan to connect more effectively with you. We've refreshed our Town of Altona website, relied upon our Town of Altona social media pages, created a newsletter called In The Loop, which is placed monthly in every mailbox, created video content, done our best to keep a current and positive handle on COVID communications and added a full-time staff position on our team of communications officer. That commitment to community engagement was on display with our cannabis conversation, a virtual conversation that was viewed by over 800 households. And after the community spoke with a clear majority to allow retail cannabis to be sold in Altona, we welcome Tyler Fraze to Altona's business world via a virtual hearing earlier this year, where Tyler's application was supported by a variety of Altona residents, the Altona and District Chamber of Commerce, and Altona Police Chief Perry Batchelor. The spring opening is expected, 
I believe he's already a member of the chamber, and uh, Altona Hotel has also undergone this public hearing process, and we look forward to hearing about their next steps as well. I've had nothing but positive, or at least non-negative, comments on the way our community, our administration, and our council gave voice and support to a question that attracted the attention of media from as far afield as the National Post. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for your support. We've discovered and probably always known community engagement sounds good. It's important, but not always easy. Whether the questions relate to changes to our services or concerns in the community or why a decision was made, we have heard from you. We feel an informed community is a motivated community. And while our actions may not always be popular, they will not be made in isolation. Thank you for also voicing your opinion through our surveys on waste collection and downtown parking and through our community conversation on cannabis, drainage, and zoning. We look forward to connecting with you more in 2021. And what else happened? Equal Access Altona, our community volunteer-driven accessibility committee, spearheaded projects removing physical barriers like sidewalk grinding, the Center Avenue crosswalk, access of accessible access into the Sunflower Gardens arena spectator areas, along with attitudinal barriers through training and education. Thank you to those of you who participated in our accessibility survey. The group will be looking for follow-up feedback later this year. The Pool Liner Replacement Project. As the Premier said, no one likes to be known as the person who cancelled Christmas. Well, for our rec team and our council, we thought long and hard before deciding to keep the Aquatic Center closed for the 2020 season for the Pool Liner Replacement Project. Ultimately, the construction window, the length of the project, the potential for additional repairs, the cost and uncertainty around public health protocol made our decision not easy, but clear. We're enthused and encouraged that 2021 summer will be another chance to have fun at the Altona Aquatic Center with a brand new liner and fixtures and the addition of new spray toys and more. Uh, two lift station replacements were completed in the southeast in 2020, uh, a partnership with Manitoba Water Services Board at a cost of $1.5 million, a crucial investment in our wastewater system. The Cenotaph was relocated to a new permanent home due to the summer's planned downtown drainage project, which will involve an expenditure of over $2.2 million. Year-round compost collection, updated waste diversion loop, an updated solid waste service plan for responsible environmental stewardship. It's not been without its bumps along the way, but we've had lots of encouragement that this is the right way forward, and I see that the town of Carmen is also implementing something similar in 2021. Okay, so what's ahead? We continue to invest in emergency services, which include policing and firefighting, which, uh, by the way, made us proud last Saturday at Sun Valley Co-op. Our firefighters received their new radios in 2020. Altona Police Service and Public Works will be next in 2021 with a cost of approximately $117,000. Cybersecurity is a reality for you as business operators as it is for administration. We've set aside $26,000 to replace our main server and make other security upgrades. Recreation, more and more Altona residents are making use of our trails and sidewalks. A national study conducted in November showed that 95% of Canadians are using trails to enhance their physical and mental health. This is more important now than ever. Approximately $110,000 of our budget will be earmarked for improvements and repairs to our active transportation network. Phase two of our cemetery is underway. We commissioned Urban Systems to create a plan and have set aside $20,000 to kickstart that progress with surveying of roads, plots, and some initial plantings. Streets. We will ultimately invest over $600,000 in Second Street Northeast, for the next few years as part of a downtown drainage project. Due to the size of the undertaking, some of that project will spill over in 2022. In addition to a $2.2 million provincial grant, the town of Altona will need to contribute significantly to that budget defining as well in 2021 and 2022. 
Speaking of drainage, we are proceeding with addressing the drainage issues in southwest Altona. In 2020, we hosted a virtual town hall meeting, unveiled an engineered prepared path forward, and have set aside $170,000 for culverts and significant earthwork. It's another fiscal implication of creating a community on a flat prairie. In terms of dollars and cents, Council committed to a 0% municipal tax increase in 2020, and will again for this next tax year. Our residents and businesses are still facing challenges due to COVID-19, and in recognition of that, Council is freezing the tax rate once again. The 2021 financial plan will be formally presented on March 23rd at a virtual town hall meeting. We welcome your feedback. Our community will continue to benefit from those with the energy, enthusiasm, and skin in the game to move us forward. And for our town council, hearing from and partnering with organizations that are committed to making Altona a better place to live. And I know many of you in this room have also supported these initiatives underway or expected to be completed this year. The Kitty Sunshine Center, which has raised almost $300,000 towards an overall complete reworking of the main floor, a new kitchen, and a doubling of infant and toddler capacity. Access field washroom facilities and canteen. Oakview Golf Course Clubhouse Renovation at a cost of $50,000. Altona Community Garden Pavilion Project valued at some $150,000. And serious and fruitful discussion on the potential relocation of the South Central Regional Library, Altona Branch. On behalf of the community, thank you for your financial and other support. We are the better for your generosity. Not all growth can, nor should rely, on tax dollars. It was also with a great sense of pride that we've seen our business community pivot in 2020. Whether that involved alt signs creating awareness and buy-in with social distancing reminders on the floor or on the door, and Red River Glass creating professional looking plexiglass barriers throughout the region, or 12 Salon who turned curbside into an art form, or the Chamber of Commerce who relied on YFC The Station and Altona Elks for home deliveries. I know there were more and continue to be many more examples. Let me wrap things up with a request. A request that as you, as business owners, connect with your staff tomorrow or later this week, thank them. Thank them for staying positive and, and by and large being a front line of defense in our collected COVID call to action. They are the ones who had no say in the political or public health discussions and decisions that have impacted their schedule, their earning power, and their interaction with at times a small vocal minority who have pushed back when your staff are simply trying to do the right thing. So thank you for doing that. On behalf of Council, I wish you a successful 2021 and beyond.